I call your attention this morning to Mark chapter 12. To the passage that I have just read for you in our second reading. You remember, brothers and sisters, that last Sunday you saw how the scribes were called upon by our Lord. We were called upon by our Lord to look at the scribes, especially to look at their pretending, their hypocrisy, and look at how, for example, especially the example well known to everybody in the ancient society that they were pretenders and hypocrites because they cheated the widows who went to them for professional assistance and counsel. How they badly treated the widows that we are there told that they devour widows' houses. In verse 14, the Lord calls us to this awareness in verse 14, brothers and sisters, that people like that, pretenders, insincere people, cheat and robbers, people who did not uh, receive others and treat others with sincerity of heart and honesty of heart before God, they will receive, as the Lord tells them, greater condemnation, more intensified punishment, as the word there would have us to imagine. Now this morning, brothers and sisters, in contrast with how the Christ treated people, especially the widows, the Lord calls our attention to another widow and shows us that even though widows were so treated, widows were so much in misery, He singled out one particular widow as a lesson for us in how the widow loved God despite her Lord, a difficulty in this life. So much so that our Lord calls our attention to verse 44 where the Lord says that this particular poor widow put in all that she had. It could be, brothers and sisters, that when she went to the temple of God to make this donation, to make this offering with these two little coins, these were the two little coins that she had received as she was, as she spent the whole day begging by the roadside and having received this, for she was empty-handed, now she had two coins that she could offer to God. She quickly rushed in to make donations to God, to register this to us, brothers and sisters, that life is more than riches, that there is a God in heaven, and He is sympathetic to everyone, and that no matter how poor you may be, if you have a true heart, He does see you, He does know you, and He does receive you, brothers and sisters. Will you ever have such a attention for God? Are you looking at your misery? Are you looking at your the other state of your finances at this point in time? Would you learn from this poor lady? That she was known to be poor. She was known to be a widow. And at this very time the Lord calls you to see that she was focused on God and she would give to God all that she had. Of them. She gave and reserved for God. We learned three important lessons that I hope that you will keep in mind this thing. Look at the location of the Lord, you find him that he was opposite the treasury. That is verse 41. And Jesus sat opposite the treasury, and he saw how the people put money into the treasury. And many who were rich put in much. The word opposite the treasury means in full view of the treasury. The Lord was keeping at a point, an angle where he could see everything about that side of the treasury. And we are told by historians, brothers and sisters, that in the time of our Lord at that point, there in the treasury, the temple, there were 30 collection boxes for offerings. 13, one three, and they were made of brass, brothers and sisters. And they were shaped in this way that in this modern age, you would have seen, you would have imagined that it, they were all shaped in the shape of a trumpet with a, a top, a very big opening so that people could throw in the coins. And at the bottom, it goes were very slim down in order to make sure that it would not collect if there were too much coins involved in the collection. So they were all shaped 
It is like a trumpet with a large offering at the top in order for people to make donations. And the money connect, collected at these 13 uh, boxes, they were all used for the purpose and the business and for the maintenance of the temple of God in Jerusalem. And the Lord tells us here very well. He says, and many, and many who were ruled, reached Purimah. And you can imagine there, brothers and sisters, that the Lord, He was looking at a very busy place with people coming and going with a lot of activities going on from His big place point of view, brothers and sisters. It was a very busy location in the temple of God with many coming and going. And many others, brothers and sisters, would be like our Lord joining him. And they would be standing on the opposite side where these 13 uh, boxes, collection boxes were located, simply for the reason that they wanted to see how people donate money to the temple of God, and how the rich people would come. And they will come in all their expensive clothing, and they will come with all the ponds, and they will come with their bags and bags of temple coins, and how they will come as a procession, as a show off, and how they will throw the coins into these collection boxes made of metal, made of brass, brothers and sisters. You can imagine, brothers and sisters, when they throw the coin into the box, there will be sound. Because metal and metal will produce it with that black, 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 black. And if you are putting in a lot of coins, it will even be worse now. You'll be and you can imagine the admiration from all the people sitting around and standing around. And how the rich people enjoy the attention. Because that's exactly what they wanted attention. They wanted people to take note of their show off at their wealth and the amount of money they were imagining in their own mind giving to the temple of God when actually the Lord would have nothing to do with them. The rich people who come in their best dressing and they have to show off their riches rather than to come humbly as they would come before the King of Kings and the Lord and the Lord, and the Lord of Lords. Brothers and sisters, people then and people today have not changed because people even then and now would be attracted by sights and sounds. People are attracted by possessions, by possessions and ceremonies. And the see find here, the people here were they were all attracted by all these happenings that's why they were standing and where the Lord was and they were observing and they were clapping and they were admiring everything that was happening. Just like what you find in the world. The music, the lighting, the sight, all the religious things happening in the world. People like to see. And people are actually stirred and affected by a display like that, brothers and sisters. Furthermore, if you would take one verse down to chapter 13 and verse 1, you will find that the people were also attracted by the beauty of the temple architecture. For we are told there, brothers and sisters, in chapter 13 and verse 1, then, as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, See what manner of stones and what buildings are here. They were just fascinated by the beauty of the temple complex. They were just amazed how they were looking at what a beautiful, majestic, and so richly furnished building there for the worship of God. And so you can imagine people's attention was drawn to the rich, were drawn to the sound of donation. They were drawn and amazed by the architecture, just like people going overseas, especially going to Europe. They would be looking at all the fantastic old cathedrals and church buildings. And as they go in, they would be so amazed by all this beauty. Even in China, in Japan, and anywhere to read religious places of worship of ancient times, they would all be with all these beauty architectures and building as well. People have not changed. People have not changed. 
People are attracted by all everything their eyes can see. People have not changed even in ancient times. You saw how Samuel, the prophet of God, that he was exactly like that. He was attracted by the beauty of a person, the physical stature of a person, the height level, whether the person is tall or short, has a sharp nose or flat nose, what are the beauty or handsome. Whatever you judge, you judge the external appearance of a person and here we find people are attracted by the external things we see. But you are a Christian. You must learn from what I have read for you this morning from the Holy Bible and learn to see and judge and appreciate from the eyes of God, brothers and sisters. Tell me what is distracting you? What a beauty or what sound uh, are you attracted and distracted by from this world that you are not paying attention to God? Look at how Jesus, look at how Jesus, who was there in the same building, he was facing the same crowd and he was looking at the same rich people making offerings. He was looking at Whatever else other people there, they were all looking, and yet he saw things differently. Others were impressed, others were attracted, but the Lord Jesus was looking at someone who was neglected by the crowd. No one really paid attention to her. When people saw her coming in her poor widow dressing, they suddenly become blind to her. She became invisible in their eyes. They did not see her at all. But the Lord saw her. And the Lord called the attention of the people who were dear to him, his disciples, and said, Look, 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 don't look at this and don't look at that. Don't be impressed. Look at this person that you have also become accustomed to be blind to. Look at what God looks at. Appreciate what God is appreciating. Without music, without lighting, without sound. And I hope, brothers and sisters, it is the same with you this morning as you come. Don't judge a church with whether there is a clock tower, a bell tower, or whatever, how beautiful and how many people there are in the congregation. Judge instead how God judges. Look for a church that stands for God, that will help you, that will encourage you, that will teach you to please God. And I hope that you give attention to this. Secondly, brothers and sisters, the second lesson is look at what you are told there in verse 42. Then a poor widow king, a poor widow king. Realize that as I have already called your attention to this, that our Lord singled out a poor widow in the crowd. Look, there were so many people, so many rich people, so many beautiful things, so beautiful a place it was, so much noises and tinkling of sound and tinkling and tinkling of sound, but the Lord's attention was drawn to someone who would normally be ignored by people. A poor widow, the Bible tells us. It's not just a widow. To be a widow in ancient times would already be a, a, a position of misery. We find here a poor widow. Doubly miserable, brothers and sisters. A widow giving you this idea that the person is lonely and abused. But poor! That would be even worse, condemned to be a beggar, because woman would not be employed by anyone. A woman is of no use in ancient times in an agricultural society. The best they could help to help them there would be to be a beggar outside of the temple as the people who begin to worship God and out of this sense of the religious compassion, when they came out they would be religiously moving their hearts that they, they should give something to the poor outside. And so how she would survive and normally when people give money they would not give the biggest denomination in the wallet, they would normally give the owner the smallest they could find. And in our territory in Singapore it would be not five cents. It would be the one cent. And I was surprised recently when I talked about one cent coin that the younger people that I was speaking to actually asked me, you mean we have one cent? 
But I thought the smallest is actually 10 cents or 5 cents. I say yes. It's no longer able uh, circulated very widely, but brothers and sisters, you can still find the one cent Singapore coin. It's of no use, of course, it's of no use. Give you one cent, you cannot buy anything, and the hawker will tell you, they even have a sign posted on the store to say, we do not accept one cent coin anymore. Five cent coin also no longer accepted by us. And so you can imagine the people contributing their coins to the poor beggars around them. The Lord was not distracted by the distracted by the beauty of the temple or by the people around him. Look, Christ was not looking at the rich in their fashion, in the rich display of donations. Christ was looking at an insignificant poor woman who would often be ignored. Christ is interested in those who sincerely sought the Lord and who love the Lord. Christ looks for what the Lord Jesus looked for is different from what the world looks for. As I have called your attention to in the first point, the world looks at the outside. God looks at the heart. That's what you are told there if you remember in verse 7, chapter 6, and 16 and verse 7. He says, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord, he looks at the heart. And so this morning, as you come before God in worship, as you are called to look at this poor widow, may I ask you, brothers and sisters, as you look at her heart, what about your own heart? Where is your heart this morning? What affects you? What is uppermost in your heart? What is the thing or the person in your heart that you love most, cherish most, and desire and long to please most? Is it the Lord? Because this poor widow has a heart that God looks for. And surely that's what the Lord is calling your attention to. He is not saying, come, 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 look at this poor widow. Oh, such a poor thing. Oh, such a poor thing. Hey, all of you go and help her. Carry her, carry her. Oh, yes, she cannot walk properly. Hey, give her something to eat. Oh, such a poor thing. No, the Lord is not calling you about this. The Lord is calling you and saying, look at this person. Look at the heart she's displaying in her action. Look at the love in action, brothers and sisters. And what did she do? Just listen to what our Lord tells us from verse 43 to verse 44. We read, So he called his disciples with himself, and he said to them, Assuredly I say to you that this poor widow, she has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury, because they all put in out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all that she has. Her whole life She put in more, not in financial value. Brothers and sisters, beyond the financial value, there is another value that God treasures the sincerity of her heart, the weakness the fitness, the intensity of a love for God. Now, there is no reason for her to love God. In fact, if this world were to be you, you would have said, I am no longer a Christian. How can God do this to me? Take my husband and leave me so poor that I have to be a beggar. What kind of lousy God is? I am not a Christian anymore. But look at this poor widow. She was in a miserable state. But the heart was where the heart ought to be. And she gave out of her poverty to God. That many people in her state would have despised. Oh, brothers and sisters, is this a kind of heart that you have to commitment to God, a love for God that is so wholehearted? came and said, what is the greatest commandment of all that the Lord says to love God who wants to leave? Look at this woman, this is how it is, this is what it means, this is a whole other love for God, brothers and sisters. You don't need to be rich to love God in this manner. Even a poor widow 
could love God wholeheartedly, brothers and sisters. And that's what the Bible is teaching us here. A person who loves God will give to God all his, his all, and not his extra. And we are learning here. She gave to God all that she had. And not the extra money that she had, nowhere to spend, and so she gave it to the religion and gave it to the support of missionaries. This is a lesson that you must learn from a poor widow. This is a lesson that you must teach to your children. You must teach them, brothers and sisters, to give sacrificially to the work of God and God, the work of the gospel. You must not tell them, uh, how much you have and give the smallest coin or the smallest denomination and to give to God. That should not be your, your teaching. Look at the cross of Calvary, brothers and sisters. Did God send an angel, the weakest of all angels, the dead angel that is one of them, that was of uh, no use to God, an extra angel, and the Lord said to the angels, now go to the world and die for my people on the cross of Calvary. What is this death, brothers and sisters? There was no one dearer to God and closer to God and more treasured by God than it's only because of Son. And the woman here demonstrated in his most imperfect way. The woman was demonstrating what God did in Jesus Christ. The woman gave all that she had represented by these two little small coins. But in her giving, she was mirroring God to give the best thing that he could for the salvation of his people. He loved his people so much. Despite the fact that in people like David, all people that people, and he gave his best. He didn't say they are not worthy enough. They are not worthy enough. I just give a replacement enough. You know. No, brothers and sisters, for God so loved the world that he gave him only because of son for you. And how you ought to be moved and how you ought to meditate deeply on this and demonstrate the same heart here. The people give what they do not need. The poor widow here has given out of her poverty. True love for God often will be judged by personal sacrifices, isn't it? Even our Lord Jesus Christ calls for obedience. He says, if you are to be my disciples, if you are truly to obey me, you have to count the cost. Or in Mark chapter 8, reading from verse 34 to 38, you read, When he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. For whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my work in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Brothers and sisters, are you listening? Are you listening to the call of the Lord to look at this poor widow? The Lord says, look at this poor widow because she has an important spiritual lesson for you. Don't look at her rich. Don't look at her building. Don't be distracted by all the sounds and the noises. Look at this poor, quiet woman who quickly went and made her donation and quickly leave before people chase her away. Oh, brothers and sisters, can you imagine the position that she will hold in the world to come when God gathers all his own and God calls for his people to himself? Can you imagine the slot that has already been marked and reserved for that poor widow who gave her two months to leave? But where will you be? Where will you be standing, brothers and sisters? Will it be anywhere near her? Or will it be right at the back? Very safe by the mercy of Jesus Christ who died for his people. Oh, brothers and sisters, I call your attention to the state of your heart. How Satan 
as we come to the end of the world, how Satan has managed to steal your heart away. And there is a coldness, a distraction from your soul that you have forgotten that the first occupation of in your life ought to be to please God to glorify Him. The first position in your life is to love what God loves. And that is what I am calling your attention to this morning. The third lesson quickly I call your attention to is in what He gave. Look at what you are told there in verse 42. Then a poor widow came, and she threw in two mites which made a quarter. Two mites, the two smallest coins used in the time of our Lord Jesus Christ by the Jews. Two mites would be just like I told you before. Two, two, two little coins, two little one cent coins of no use to the people. In fact, you would be taken away. The temple authorities would have said, Get off her. Your two coins bring back to you. of no use. Hey, you throw it in into the offering bag. Hey, do you know the trouble you gave us? You know, what can we do with your two coins? We cannot buy anything. Christ is teaching you, brothers and sisters, that the highest evidence of love for God is not in the amount you keep, but in the heart in which you keep. You can serve God as a preacher, you can serve God as a musician, you can serve God in any capacity. And you are so gifted, you are so good, you are so good. But brothers and sisters, the Lord does not receive your worship and sacrifices the looks look at the heart that you are evolved, evolved as you involve yourself in the worship and service. When you share with somebody the gospel of Jesus Christ, when you call somebody to be a Christian, the Lord is looking at you, not he, not her, you. And the Lord is asking you, it is with what kind of heart do you want people to be a Christian? Is it out of love and concern for the eternal happiness of the person? Or because of something that you can give from the person? Oh, the person will, but I can benefit from this relationship. Oh, brothers and sisters, no man, no wonder, nobody is a Christian today. If that is the attitude. The only two small coin that she had she gave to the Lord. In the eyes of human beings, it is just two small, tiny, useless coins. But in the eyes of God, it is very big, brothers and sisters. It is very big because it reminded God of what He Himself is. Because this small coin is despised by the world. This small coin in the eyes of the world of insignificance. But in the eyes of God, you remember what happened at Calvary. He heard what people said at Calvary. He heard the people say, crucify him, crucify him, reject him, get rid of him. He remember how Jesus Christ, his only beloved son, was sacrificed because of his love for his people. Brothers and sisters, this woman, is a reminder to you of what God has done. There were many rich people that day, and these rich people made large amounts of offerings and donations of coins. Well, this poor widow was given her two tiny coins to God. They were others giving a large amount. But the eyes of God was, were on her and not on them. The ears of God was on the sound that her two tiny coins produced, and not on the noise. <laughs> All the plenty of noises produced by their multiple coins. The smile of God was on the love in action, and not on in their boasting, personal boasting, personal preeminence. The call of the God here through Jesus Christ our Lord is for you to look at what she is doing and not to look at what they were doing. And so I call you this morning, brothers and sisters, and ask you to look at this woman and tell me, have you learned a lesson? The Lord is so different from other religions. 
Other religion is about, you know, putting a name on buildings. Other religion is about, oh, helping so many people. Like, with whatever motive of insincerity doesn't matter as long as people can see. Have you heard the call of the Lord Jesus Christ to look at this for And will you follow that example this morning, brothers and sisters, in everything we want to glorify God, we want to remind others of what Jesus has done for you on the cross of Calvary. Nothing that God has done for you is of insignificance. Everything that God does, God did it because He genuinely loved His people even though these people, they do not deserve any of this compassion and love. And so it is for you, as you come before God this Sunday morning forward, as you look at it as an example of this poor widow, learn something from her for you. Don't despise the fact that she was poor. It was not her who made herself poor. It was not her who made herself a widow. Nobody chose to be a poor widow. It was God's appointment, brothers and sisters, for a life on earth to be such a person in such a state. I do not know what kind of situation or position God has appointed for you in this lifetime. I do not know what kind of health condition and blessings you will receive in this lifetime. But I ask you, in whatever state or circumstance you find yourself, will you be like this poor widow? who submitted herself fully to God, never begged God, never cursed God, but ever believing that God deserved her best, and that one day, one day everything will be working. Remember Job, Satan attacked Job, the friends mocked Job, but Job was steady. Job continued to believe, despite the fact that he lost everything and his own health. He continue to trust in I do not know what is in your life and what's happening in your heart, but I do know that there is somebody who sits on the right hand of God in heaven, who fully sympathizes with you and who fully understands your situation and that who is willing to help you. This morning, brothers and sisters, you are looking at an unattractive world view. She will be despised and she will be cheated around, she will be pushed around, she will be ushered out and asked to leave, abused by the people around him, even in a holy place by the temple of God in Jerusalem. She was poor, and as you know, poor people would often have no friends. The poor were no friends around. She was a widow. In other words, nobody to defend her, provide for her. She would face the misery of life in a very intense experience, brothers and sisters. It's better than to die than to be in that kind of life, and yet she never lose hope. Look at her heart. There is full of hope and full of love and hope. When you look at this poor video, you realize that there is nothing in this world for her. There is everything in the new world for her though, brothers and sisters. Nothing here! Nothing here! But everything there! The sad thing, brothers and sisters, is if you are not careful, you have everything here! But come to think about it, you have nothing there! Everything here! But this is just a temporary world! Nothing there! But that is an eternal world! Are you not a fool? Are you not investing in the wrong place? The woman is steady. She has invested her best in the world that lasts forever. And she has registered it here very beautifully and it caught the attention of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord calls his, his five disciples to look at this beautiful display of hope in the world. You will never invest in that world if you do not believe in its nearness or in its coming, in its reality. That is why people, even you know, Christians, invest so much in this world. Because they can see, because they hope that it will last a long time. I ask you this morning to obey the Lord. 
Listen to what the Lord says. If you turn back to Mark chapter 12, listen. For he, he says in verse 44, they all put in out of their abundance. She, out of her poverty, put in all that she had. Her whole lively food. Her whole lively food. And she was not disappointed. For the very fact that her action is recorded in the Bible for them, which it would teach she will be remembered forever and ever in the world to come in the world to come. But what about your life? What about you? Where will you be? Will you be with this person, such a lovely person called Jesus, who took notice of a poor widow when others were distracted by the rich and the beauty of up in whatever state you are in, up, up to Jesus, and He will embrace you. Let us pray.